After ruling for less than a year, Edward VIII became the first monarch to voluntarily give up the British throne. His unprecedented decision to abdicate came at the end of a constitutional crisis for the British monarchy and government after the then King Edward decided to marry the American socialite and divorcee Wallace Simpson, a decision that was widely condemned by the British government, the British public and the Church of England. The King ultimately chose love over the throne. In his own words, he claimed he could not carry the burden of responsibility and discharged the duties of the king without the help and support of the woman he loved. But why did the marriage to a previously divorced woman cause such widespread condemnation? Was Edward VIII popular before the decision or was this just an excuse to force him off the throne? And what happened to him after the abdication? Well, make sure to stick around because this short 7 minute documentary will cover all and more. And if you like this video, please subscribe and let me know in the comments if there are any other topics you would like to see me cover. Before we get into the abdication, it's worth covering a bit about Edward's background before he was made king. Edward was born in 1894 during the reign of his grandmother, Queen Victoria I, as the eldest child of the future King George V. When he was a young man, Edward served during World War I, taking part in several tours overseas representing his father and the crown, even volunteering to join the front lines. However, he wasn't allowed, with the Secretary of War claiming if the heir apparent to the British throne was captured on the front lines, it would cause too much harm to the war effort. Despite this, Edward took every chance to visit the front lines as much as possible and had witnessed trench warfare firsthand. For these efforts, he was awarded with the Military Cross in 1916 and became extremely popular among veterans of the war. Edward represented his father at home and abroad on many occasions. With his reputation, good looks and bachelor status, Edward received a lot of public attention and gained celebrity status in the Western world. During a visit to the United States in 1924, a menswear magazine profile filed him and observed that the average young man in America was more interested in the clothes of the prince than any other individual on earth. During his time as the Prince of Wales, Edward spent much of his time partying and romancing. He had several affairs and had a reputation of making poor choices in his matches, something that worried the then Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin and the King, especially after one of his affairs was with the Parisian courtesan Marguerite Alibert, who was put on a murder trial after shooting her husband. It was well known at this point that King George V favoured his second son Albert and his daughter Elizabeth, with it being reported that he prayed that Edward would never marry and have children so the throne would make its way to Albert and his potential heir Elizabeth. Edward developed a particular taste for married women. During an affair with the wife of a British peer, he was introduced to her friend Wallace Simpson. The two became lovers, but the concept of a future king marrying an American divorcee drove a further rift with King George V and the government. Even more so after it became apparent Edward was entirely enamoured with her, with an account stating she had the Prince of Wales completely under her thumb. On the 20th of January in 1936, King George V died. Immediately after, as is tradition, the heir Edward ascended the throne as King Edward VIII. As a new monarch, he caused unease within government circles with an unorthodox approach, making decisions that were interpreted as interfering in political matters. Now, if you know anything about the British Constitution, it's all ran on conventions. And while there's no law against it, it's considered very unconventional for the monarch to state their opinions on political matters, as they are meant to be a neutral entity that remains outside of politics. His actions made government ministers reluctant to pass on state papers to the new king, not just because of his political opinions, but also because there was a very serious worry Wallace Simpson might read them and inadvertently reveal government secrets. This breaking of conventions in British politics seemed to characterise the entirety of Edward's reign. He even broke with the tradition of the coinage that bore his image, with it being a convention that each successive monarch faced in the opposite direction to their predecessor. However, Edward insisted that he face the left as his father had done, to show the parting in his hair. Only a few of these coins were minted before his abdication, making them one of the rarest coins in the world. Six months into Edward's reign, it became increasingly clear he intended to marry Wallace Simpson, and despite the media covering the affair extensively in the United States, there was a voluntary media silence in the United Kingdom, with the British public barely knowing about the affair until December. On the 16th of November 1936, Edward made his intentions official when he invited the Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin to Buckingham Palace and expressed his desire to marry Wallace Simpson. 
Baldwin protested, claiming that his subjects would deem the marriage as unacceptable, mainly because remarriage after divorce was opposed by the Church of England, which Edward was the head of, and also that the public would not accept Simpson as a queen. The Church of England was so opposed to the king marrying a divorcee that the archbishop was insistent that Edward should go for even suggesting the marriage. However, Edward was determined to marry the woman he loved. He proposed alternative solutions, such as marrying Simpson but not allowing her to become queen, but any alternatives were shot down by cabinet. Edward informed Baldwin that if he could not marry Simpson as king, then he would abdicate. Baldwin countered by giving the king three options. One, give up the idea of marrying Wallace Simpson. Two, marry against the wishes of the government. Or three, abdicate. Edward was not prepared to give up Wallace and he knew that if he married against the wishes of the government and the Church of England, it would cause a massive constitutional crisis, leaving him with no choice but to abdicate. On the 10th of December 1936, Edward signed the instruments of abdication in the presence of his younger brothers, Prince Albert, who was next in line for the throne, Prince Henry and Prince George. And the next day, Edward completed his last act as king, giving the royal assent to his own abdication and departed Britain for Australia the following day. No longer a king, but now reverted to the title of prince. The now former King Edward's younger brother, Albert, ascended the throne and became King George VI. His first act as new king was to make his brother the Duke of Windsor, with the style His Royal Highness. While this seems like it might be a move that comes out of a loving place, it was actually a shrewd political move which would ensure the former king could never stand for election nor speak on political matters in the House of Lords. After staying quiet for several months, Edward finally married Wallace Simpson in France in 1937. However, no members of the royal family attended the ceremony. The relationship between the former king and the rest of the royal family grew increasingly strained as they came to blows over the former king's finances and income. With there never having previously been an abdication from the throne, it was unclear how it would be handled. He was handed an income to live off, but on the condition that he never returned to Britain without an invitation. And the Duke only returned a handful of times after that, once during World War II, and again at its end, and then again in 1947 to petition for a diplomatic position, which was swiftly rejected. He visited again in 1952 to attend the funeral of his successor and brother, George VI, and once more to visit his sister and mother. But he remained in exile for the rest of his life, only being allowed to return to his former kingdom at the invite of the royal family which was actually something he rejected several times. There was a definite unease within the royal family around having a former monarch still active and even possibly admired. It is now common knowledge that the former king flirted briefly with Nazi Germany, even visiting the country in 1937 against the advice of the British government. The Duke and Duchess both met Adolf Hitler and are documented as giving full Nazi salutes. In Germany, they were treated like royalty, with members of the German aristocracy bowing and curtsying to the Duchess, something the Duke had always wished would happen in Britain. Many historians agree that if Hitler had taken Britain, he was ready to reinstate Edward as king, in the hope of establishing a puppet government. It's also widely believed that the Duke and Duchess sympathised with fascism during the war, with a series of letters coming out after the war confirming as much. When the war ended, the Duke and Duchess essentially became celebrity figures and never held any official positions again. Instead, they enjoyed their retirement and hosted several high-profile parties in Paris and New York, occasionally meeting US presidents as well. By the late 1960s, Edward's health had deteriorated. Being a heavy smoker all his life, much like his younger brother, he was diagnosed with throat cancer in 1971. Queen Elizabeth II visited the Duke and Duchess for a final time in 1972, before the former king died 10 days after a visit, at the age of 77, and was buried in the royal burial ground. The Duchess lived on but became frail and suffered greatly from dementia before also eventually passing in 1986, when it was permitted for her to be buried alongside her husband. Edward VIII was the first monarch to abdicate the British throne, and will probably remain the only king to do so. Despite his petitions for a diplomatic role, his flirting with fascism in Germany, or his time spent in exile after his abdication, it was common knowledge that the king stepped down from the crown for love, and that in his own words, he did not once regret the abdication, because he was so happy. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel, we'll be making more content like this. I really appreciate you watching, and look forward to seeing you again next time.